Hello again, everyone. Um, again, I was very impressed with everything that we've done so far. Um, it, it wasn't easy. So we, we started at very early today and we went through quite a, quite a few sessions and congratulations uh, to us all. So we, we've done a phenomenal effort so far and um, uh, we've had some of the most engaging sessions uh, in all of our events so far. Ask Me Anything was fantastic. You know, some of our case studies was fantastic. Our partners did an amazing job. Like I've, I've enjoyed those sessions, all of them um, uh, a lot and simply big applause to all of us. And um, here we are with another, the last but not the least sessions. I love them. I love all of them. And um, in this session, um, you know, about this session also, I'm also very curious um, to listen to and, uh, and learn together. Uh, we will talk about the technology ecosystem for designing a world-class CX program, which majority of experienced management professionals do. And for that, I would like to welcome co-founder and CEO of Dash Network, Clint Wheelock. Clint, please join myself on the stage. There we go. Thank you very much, Oskan. It's nice to talk with you again. Good morning, Clint. <laughs> So due, due to time zones and difference, again, I can't thank you enough for making, making the time being here with us. And it is actually uh, an absolute pleasure and honor uh, from our side to have you and Dash Network with us today. Um, again, I, I don't know how to introduce you because simply when I check the resume, you'll, you'll most probably tell our audience um, you know, about the stories. I realized that even before I started reading, and trust me, I started very early, like very, very early, you were doing research. Back then, you know, we will, we will talk about technology today, but back then most probably it was all papers. <laughs> you know, uh, there's a tremendous experience that you'll be bringing on uh, today and to, to share with our community. Um, again, we, we're all very excited for that. Well, thank you so much, Askan. I really appreciate it and really appreciate the opportunity to participate in uh, Paisano's CX Day today. And uh, your, your, your comments remind me that I have been in the technology market research business. Sorry, for, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't mean that you're all sorry. <laughs> <laughs> as, my, uh, as my kids say, oh, so you were around in the olden days. <laughs> So any, anyway, uh, it's uh, but but the experience certainly helps get a uh, better perspective on some of the current market trends as well. So I truly appreciate it. Thank you very much, Khalid. I will I'll, I'll leave you with the audience and I'll leave the stage to yourself. Please do enjoy. I'll be back for the Q&A session. Okay, that sounds great. Thanks so much. I look forward to that part. Well, thanks to all of you for joining. And as Oscon mentioned, I'm Clint Wheelock. I'm co-founder and CEO of Dash Network and Dash Research, who um, has produced a lot of the market intelligence that will be the basis for today's uh, presentation is our market intelligence and research arm. Uh, but we also have a digital media platform and we'll be organizing some events as well. So I will, uh, I'll will i talk a little bit more about that by way of introduction. But again, what a pleasure to be here and what an honor it is to be able to wrap up such a successful CX day. Um, well, we'll do that by uh, really trying to explore a, a CX practitioner's view and end user's view of how best to um, design and implement a world-class CX program. And this is based on extensive primary research that I'll uh, talk about in just a minute here. But first, just a, a brief introduction to Dash Network. We are an integrated business-to-business -business media firm. Uh, we combine market intelligence or research, events, and digital media uh, through a daily stream of news and analysis, as well as other multimedia assets to really try to showcase some of the best practices in CX initiatives around the world um, and to demystify some of the technology selection, the vendor selection, and all the business processes that have to go along with those initiatives. We are an independent voice in the market, not beholden to any vendors, any clients, any uh, associations, governments, or other special interests. Um, and we're based here in Denver, Colorado, where it's a nice, uh, sunny, and maybe partly cloudy day out there. Uh, we focus on the global CX market, which according to our market sizing and uh, forecasting model is projected to grow from $32 billion in global 
uh, revenue in 2020 to more than 55 billion by 2026. So this is a market while it's been around for a while that's still developing quite quickly. And obviously there are a lot of key market trends that are driving increasing growth across the segments. Speaking of which, we do look at seven different functional areas of CX. So we look at um, insights by technology segment, which I'll uh, go over in more detail in just a minute. Insights by industry as well, including some of the ones you see here. And in all of this, our ambition is to build the world's largest community of CX professionals. We have uh, uh, many thousands of registered users on our website and receiving our newsletter on a weekly basis and an even broader reach through a partner network. And there is a reason that we call it Dash Network. It's a, it's a global network of partners and uh, Paisano has been a, a terrific partner along the way as well. So there are three different ways we do this. There are three brands uh, for Dash Network. There, uh, as I mentioned, we'll focus primarily on intelligence coming out of the Dash research um, uh, analyst team. Uh, and this is a case where we produce um, syndicated market research reports that include a detailed view of the uh, CX market ecosystem, as well as market sizing and forecasting, and then deep dive analysis of key trends uh, within the different technology segments, within the different industries, and some of the cross-cutting factors, such as artificial intelligence, which really are enabling a lot of the advancements in CX today. Uh, Dash Network is our digital media platform, news analysis, webinars, videos, and, and, and so forth on a, on a daily basis. And it's really designed to help CX practitioners uh, demystify their choices, figure out some of the best practices that are happening out there across different industries and put them into practice. And that's a lot of what we'll be talking about during the course of the presentation today. And then later we will be launching Dash events, both digital and virtual events, as well as live executive summits and networking sessions uh, for people to collaborate on those same best practices within CX as well. In terms of areas of focus, just to frame it a little bit, uh, CX is after all a cross-cutting discipline. It really uh, spans the entire customer journey and involves all the different touch points, all the different impressions and engagements that a company has with a brand. Um, this discipline really does come out of uh, some previous uh, kind of legacy departments like sales organizations, marketing and customer service operations, but it's a way of breaking down the silos um, in, a, in a fashion that really brings together all aspects of the customer experience and brings together different data sources using technology platforms and the technology stack, which we'll talk about more as well. The seven key areas we focus on and that are the subject of uh, some of these best practices we'll discuss are CRM, customer insights and feedback, customer data and analytics, customer data platforms, personalization and optimization, contact center technologies, and of course, empl effective employee experience is integral to really being able to provide the best world-class customer experience as well. Uh, we look at 20 different industries in total uh, five key early adopter industries and pace setters within the CX market are retail, financial services, telecommunications, travel and hospitality, and healthcare, uh, but there are a number of others in the long tail of adoption as well. So what we'll talk about here, some of the key conclusions, some of the key observations are based on a recent, uh, recently published CX technology guide, which really looks at the architecture of CX uh, from a people, process, policy, governance, and technology perspective. And it serves as a, a, we're aiming for a concise overview of the technology stack and some actionable advice for end users, for practitioners on what are the key market drivers of CX software, um, what, what, are, what are the roles of the different elements of the technology stack, the, the seven different uh, classes of technology software, and then the most effective design approaches, vendor selection approaches, and ways for your organization to become ready for the implementation of CX software. Uh, our goal here is to really provide insights, recommendations for designing CX programs that can last, and to showcase and spotlight real world and user case studies that really bring that to life and show you what some of the most effective CX innovators around the world are doing uh, today to accomplish these goals. The CX technology guide is available at dashnetwork.com. It's a free uh, resource for the industry. Uh, we've had many thousands of, uh, of practitioners downloading it already, and it's made possible through the support of several key sponsors who are listed in the guide. Um, let's talk a little bit about the role of CX software. 
Um, we know that providing excellent customer service is really paramount to creating the kind of experience that can transform prospects into customers, customers into evangelists, make sure that customers are happy on an ongoing basis. And of course, this all drives the key business objectives of increased revenue, um, more effective customer acquisition, and more effective customer retention. Um, and second, um, buyers need to do a few key things to ensure that new software in the CX world su supports the delivery of a positive customer experience. They need to understand the functions of each element in the technology stack, recognize how each application or software platform can be linked to those business goals, objectives, the key processes, and ensuring that the vendors who are supplying the technology can meet the expectations regarding implementation and support. There are several key benefits of utilizing CX software. The first one is consolidating data, bringing everything together into a single view that really um, kind of neutralizes the silos that we have uh, affected, that, that, that we've seen over time with regard to um, the implementation of, uh, of, uh, of, of effective uh, unified customer journeys. Um, and also we need to ensure compliance as well. Um, many of these uh, applications and platforms can automatically segment and manage personal data. And of course, in many industries, there is more sensitivity around personally identifiable information and other ty types of uh, different privacy regimes around the world that, that have, have to be complied with as well. Um, the third key benefit is supporting omni-channel engagement initiatives. Um, omni-channel has really become table stakes within a number of different industries. It's really led by the retail and e-commerce industry, just in terms of really providing uh, a common customer experience across um, different um, uh, 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 across different modes of, uh, of interacting with a brand and bringing that data together and really uh, creating a common experience so that it's not fragmented or disjointed. And the, and the fourth key uh, benefit is enabling future technology integration. Uh, most of the leading CX platforms today have a robust set of APIs that enable or application programming interfaces that, that enable them to talk to other systems, whether those might be legacy systems within an organization's technology stack, or if they are uh, effectively future proofing so that new applications can be added at a later date. So several key market drivers looking on a broad basis at CX um, software utilization. And I just have to say that um, the real starting point here is to take a comprehensive view of the customer journey and to um, break down some of these functional silos that we mentioned. So uh, several key trends from a broader market perspective, the rise of customer centricity and the focus on a holistic customer journey, the mapping of these customer journeys for uh, different types of, uh, of user stories, if you will, uh, the elimination of functional silos and the dysfunction that that can create within an organization and some of those traditional functional silos, including marketing and sales and customer service operations, uh, maybe field operations, any, any number of other areas. Um, third, increasing the levels of trackable digital engagement, especially for purposes of personalization and optimization, which is a key rising trend within the global CX market. And as I mentioned, the growth of those omni-channel experiences as well. So as you'll see from the infinite loop here, it really goes from the earliest need that a customer might identify or uh, might identify with, uh, researching the options, selecting options, making the purchase itself, and then kind of phasing into the ownership portion of the customer journey from, a, from an end customer perspective, receiving or fulfilling or installing or implementing uh, the relationship with the, with the brand, using the products and services, maintaining the products and services, recommending, and hopefully at that point, uh, it all starts over again, and it's a it's an effective um, a strategy for uh, for retention and for maximizing that customer relationship over time. So I've talked about the technology stack several times, and um, it's this is a conceptual model that has been designed by the Dash research team. It really underpins a lot of our research and analysis in the space, whether it's looking at the market ecosystem and classifying where some of those vendors and service providers sit. Uh, or if it's uh, you know more from an end user perspective, really thinking about how the different pieces fit together to accomplish different business objectives. 
The data, as you'll see, is designed to flow from bottom to top. We have customer data, product data, transaction data, as well as data related to marketing, interactions, support, and fulfillment. And it really flows from the top up through these different technology stack elements. And those include customer data platforms, CRM or customer relationship management, customer analytics, customer feedback, personalization and optimization and contact center. And then this uh, whole realm of employee experience, as I mentioned, is just absolutely vital, vital because if you have happy, enabled, empowered employees, they can provide a customer experience that's just head, head and shoulders above a more um, uh, a dysfunctional organization or a traditional organization where uh, employees are not necessarily engaged or enabled in the right ways. There are some overlaps among these different segments, and so they're, they're not necessarily discrete. And there are some cross-cutting forces or some sub-segments, like if you take customer communities, for example, or social media management, that's partly personalization and optimization, partly customer data analytics, um, and uh, you know, partly uh, customer data platforms as well that, that enable those types of capabilities. So from the standpoint of designing a, uh, a CX initiative, the, this is the really the process and the flow that we recommend end users and practitioners look at as they are, um, as they're designing their objectives and really thinking about how best to implement their programs, how best to make the right technology decisions. This is based on extensive primary research with the leading CX in innovators around the world um, on the practitioner or end user side of the market, as well as our ongoing conversations with key CX vendors and service providers who are leading the charge in terms of innovating the technology capabilities. So it really starts with identifying the key goals, the business goals uh, and objectives that an organization has in mind. And for this to be effective, it really requires executive or C-suite buy-in for the CX initiative. We find that if senior management is not on board and does not consider this a key strategic priority, then a CX initiative is likely to be much less effective. Uh, the second is to really gain a clear view of the relevant data for purposes of these customer touch points, capturing it, classifying it, organizing it, knowing in which systems it resides, um, and then really being able to map that out as, uh, as an organization is looking to bring together those data sources and create common touch points as part of a unified customer experience that, map, that maps closely with the customer journey. Identifying key, uh, uh, key performance indicators or KPIs and metrics is a very important thing. Uh, you, if to manage something effectively, of course, you have to measure it properly. Um, and so really knowing how you're going to capture some of those key metrics is vitally important. Gaining alignment between policies and procedures with the CX goals, any regulatory concerns that uh, a particular industry faces, or any uh, governance or compliance uh, matters, and then making sure those are aligned with the key objectives as well. Um, and then next, the fifth step is to assess, um, to uh, investigate, to explore, to research the various um, tools and software that are available to enable these better customer journeys and to really understand the comparative differences because there are, are very few apples to apples when it comes to uh, uh, selecting vendors and selecting technology. Many of the platforms have somewhat different capabilities and are suited for different purposes. Um, and then finally, working with the vendors to integrate, to plan, to implement, um, and to maintain uh, the technology stack uh, once the whole initiative is designed. Um, and many times these, uh, to, to be most effective, these uh, implementation processes can take several months. They can be a little bit faster in simpler cases. They can go on in multiple phases over a period of years. So it really just depends on the objectives and the complexity of the, of the, the data infrastructure and the systems infrastructure for a particular company. So a few different CX software categories to remember. Um, there is uh, the platform, which serves as the foundation or the base upon which other applications, processes, and technologies are developed. Um, modern CX platforms are future-proof in the sense that they can enable the addition of uh, more capabilities or, or more point solutions going forward um, and, uh, and, and are not locked into a particular vendor ecosystem. Uh, using APIs and other types of tools for interoperability and ease of integration. 
the applications, the standalone software that are, that's designed to carry out a specific task or functions, but not necessarily marketed as a, as a full suite solution. And then finally, professional services for integrating and using the software. This covers not just integration, but setup and training and the ongoing support and maintenance as well. And then uh, moving on the, to some of the CX design approaches, the vendor selection criteria, the CX software readiness, readiness and recommendations. We know that switching vendors uh, includes a lot of pain. And so you want to try to make the right decision up front. And it can be taxing and costly for an organization to, to do that more often. And so uh, I would really refer you mainly to the technology guide, which includes a lot more detail on deployment options, frequency of updates, customer service options, training, vendor scorecards, critical product features, assessing the intangible aspects of one of these um, of one of these uh, programs, CX software readiness, and some of the key pitfalls to avoid. And then finally, uh, uh, to uh, not enough time to really dive into the details of all the wonderful case studies that are happening out there in the CX market during today's session. But again, I would invite you to download the uh, CX technology guide, a free resource. Um, and we really look at a number of different case studies, uh, some that are focused on the key areas, uh, the key functional areas like customer feedback, contact center, CRM, employee experience, and so forth. And then some deep dive case studies on particular industries uh, with a spotlight on insurance, transportation, and telecommunications. So some of the key conclusions here, and then we'll open it up for a Q&A and uh, happy to address anything that you, uh, that you may want to ask. Um, we have found through our extensive research and really looking at the best practices that smart, the smartest organizations have realized technology can serve as a foundation for enhancing CX in the future. Now, the customer experience market, and as Oscon mentioned, I've been in the technology market intelligence industry analyst world for about 20 years, and um, many of those markets are driven by technology capabilities. If it's mobile and wireless, or if it's you know, IP technologies, or you know, if it's AI capabilities, or, or whatever it might be, a lot of it has a technology push. The CX market is a bit different. There's technology enablement through software, but just as important are the effective alignment of business practices and business objectives with that as well. So the, the technology stack is a foundation, but it's not the uh, it's not the end of the story. It really has to do with how that's married with the uh, business objectives as well. Second, evaluating, selecting, and overseeing the implementation of the software used to improve CX requires certain skills, but you don't need to be a technology expert. There are a lot of professional services available from vendors and other uh, service providers to make this easy. The tools themselves are getting more and more intuitive. And so this is not an esoteric art. This is something that should be accessible to anybody that has anything to do with the customer experience, which of course for most brands, is almost everybody in the organization. The third conclusion and recommendation is to be sure to solicit the opinion of all the relevant stakeholders. I mentioned that executive buy-in is really important for an effective uh, CX program to be designed, but also all the different functional areas within an organization need to be aligned well, and the objectives need to be aligned in harmony with what's trying to be accomplished for the customer journey itself. And this is a a uh, very complex undertaking potentially, but the rewards and the investment are well worth it. Um, I, I think we would say just based on all the conversations we've had and, and everything we've seen with effective CX practices that it's really all about knowing your customer first and foremost. And these technology tools are really all about making that easier about tap, by tapping into the necessary data. Um, these, these initiatives can take uh, potentially months to implement, uh, but uh, it, it's, uh, it's a very worthwhile exercise that can really accomplish those key goals of better customer acquisition, better retention, and improved customer satisfaction. So with that being said, I will uh, open it back up and we can uh, talk about some Q&A. Any questions that you guys may have? Here we go. So Clint, there is... You know, it was amazing. So there is there's a lot to learn from you um, on all these presentations. For a while, I thought that you didn't even breathe. <laughs> please take it. Please take it. Please take too a much moment to say. To... Yeah, too too much to share here. It's all exciting stuff. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, I'll I'll be helping you out with the Q and A. So the questions are already dropping. So uh, please take a moment to 
get a get a breath. And then again, um, I, I'm I was watching the number of uh, participants, so we didn't even lose one person. So it was a very engaging content. Just again, <laughs> take take a fresh breath, and I'll I'll, I'll drop you the questions. So <clears throat> we we have um uh, uh three questions. So I'll 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 start with the first one. Do we accept that the EX and CX management have very common perspective points? I actually refer back to the technology tech that you've done on the slide. I love that. I I love that image done by Dash Network. And then um, uh, uh, the question is, isn't it too complicated sometimes in a way as they are managed by different departments of companies? So do you have a good example or suggestions for a more holistic mindset? Well, I, I think that's a fantastic question, and it, it identifies one of the key pitfalls that organizations run into as they're designing these CX initiatives, and that is the fragmentation of the organizational structure. And we know that um, you know, effectiveness often uh, follows organization. Uh, and so when you've got several key stakeholder groups, and I mentioned this uh, in the final conclusion slide, uh, like sales organizations, marketing, customer service operations, even uh, finance, um, uh, the executive management, whatever, whatever, product management, whatever it might be, it is important to get everybody together. The, the alignment is essential. And this is being accomplished in a couple of different ways. Sometimes CX initiatives reside within one of those functional organizations, but there is a an effective, for the most effective initiatives, there's a broad charter uh, for them to work with the entire organization and to really drive uh, the, the entire initiative. Sometimes there are uh, CX groups that sit on their own and that are outside those functional silos. Either approach can work and it really just depends on the nature of the organization. But I would say also that the, the top down, the senior management buy-in and endorsement at the board level and the C-suite level of CX initiatives is absolutely critical. We've talked to many folks who had a you know, small CX initiative within a customer service group, let's say, and they just have not been able to be as effective because they run into these organizational barriers. So that's all important to keep in mind. Well, that's fantastic. As, as you know, right before our, our session, there was an Ask Me Anything uh, session where we had both the X and CX perspectives at the same time. So um, we're, we're trying to also um, uh, you know, approach, approach the situation in a similar manner to how you describe it. But again, there's, there's still um, uh, a, lot, a lot to do in that space. And taking up, picking up one of the questions, this is one of the questions which is very relevant to yourself. So you're also seeing the q and I'm not going to take them, you know, first in, first out, but, you know, uh, carefully selecting because we have a lot of questions. So how can a com company or a professional educate themselves about CX? getting a consultation from an expert or taking the long road and attending an educational program. This is exactly, you know, um, you know, it, it, it falls into your field, I believe. It does. Well, I mean, of course, you may not be surprised to hear that my first recommendation is to follow the news, the analysis, the research on Dash Network. Uh, we, that are, we're really, our, our entire purpose is to help inform, educate, inspire, and upskill the CX, the global CX community on some of the best practices that are happening out there. We, we are an objective voice in the market, uh, covering the news, covering analysis, and really uh, taking an independent look. So that I, I'll, I'll have to put that plug in first. But there are also a number of other good resources. There are industry associations that are uh, that are focused on CX, of course. The, the CX Professionals Association offers a certification program uh, for CX practitioners. There are other training uh, organizations such as Horizon CX, um, uh, based here in the US, the US that, that handle um, some certification uh, training uh, for uh, for CX as well, and, and other resources too. And of course, I you know would be remiss if I didn't mention Paisano Academy as a great resource for the industry and one that really informs and provides uh, details on some of those best practices on a regular basis. Um, there are you know a number of webinars available, a number of white papers, um, some underwritten by uh, the vendors in the market, but some you know a bit more neutral. In their tone as well. So th this is an industry with a wealth of resources, um, and uh, th those are just a few. Thanks, Clint. Um, it, it was an honor to be mentioned by you. Yeah, when you when you mentioned Pisano Academy, we would be still, um, uh, you know, 
um, I would say good community and network, but again, um, a Dash network is um, also a reliable source of information for us. Pretty much every weekend, we have the Dash Networks updates that we use in our, our company strategy. We simply use it as a voice of the market. So there's there's a lot to learn. There's a lot that we are uh, seeing the value coming from uh, that source of information. So thanks um, thanks again for providing that that um, uh, information to the uh, uh, to the community. So um, another question. So uh, this this may be very difficult to answer, but again, I'm also curious about the answer. So what's your observation about CX practices in different regions of the globe? So what are the similarities and differences? This this is a difficult question, I know. But you know, if, if you have any insights or you know or or quick tips uh, without our audience because you know majority of our audience work in global multinational international companies they are in the process of this consolidation you know of the you know metrics and results and also people that for journeys different pro so how do, how do you see that globally well i think it's really interesting because i mean there do seem to be different trends and and our, our market coverage is global we segment the market by world regions and often look at individual conditions within um, country markets as well. Um, and, you know, we certainly see different emphasis in different industries. Um, you know, I think a lot of the activity um, uh, in, in CX uh, here in North America has been driven a lot in the early going by the retail industry in particular, but, you know, in other markets like, you know, uh, EMEA, uh, we'll, we'll see, you know, more focus on, uh, on B2B markets as well. Um, really, you know, uh, and, and, and from an Asia Pacific perspective, um, not as much traditional focus on CX, but it's coming on strong. It's happening fast. And, and I think companies are uh, really increasing their focus on deploying these kind of capabilities. Where I see similarities are in the basic building blocks of the technology stack um, and the capabilities that these platforms enable, whether it's customer insights and feedback or if it's uh, customer data platforms or whatever. But I think where we see differences is just based on the nuances of different kinds of customer relationships. And so, you know, in different markets around the world, there is, uh, you know, perhaps in, in some industries, more of a focus on face-to-face -face interactions um, you know, through service centers or payment centers or um, or retail uh, uh, operations and so forth. And then in other parts of the world, it's a different mix. There's more uh, more online integration or mobile integration. Uh, you know, some of it has to do with uh, internet penetration, mobile penetration, and, and the availability to end users of, uh, of these modes of communicating. So there are, are certainly some variances, and then there are variances among different industries as well. But I, I think uh, I think you know there is great innovation every corner of the world. Um, and you know we're, we're learning a lot. We've done a series of a few interviews with uh, CX innovators in Africa and the Middle East recently, and have been you know really intrigued by the different ways that they're using some of the same tools for somewhat different types of customer journeys and uh, customer touch points. So the, some of those are highlighted in the uh, technology guide. Others are published on the Dash Network site on a regular basis, and just would you know invite you to uh, to check those out because there are a lot of interesting stories there. Thank you very much, Colin. Um, again, we will be we will be looking out, um, you know, in detail and trying to understand the different uh, perspectives or different experiences or implementation from different parts of the world. And when it comes to this is this is a tricky question. Uh, I think <laughs> you know the audience would like to push you a little bit more. But you know, uh, uh, you know, there is there's a question, and I, I'm I'm also not sure how to ask this directly or uh, you know appropriately. For enterprise level organizations today, how is your experience or take on uh, the biggest players versus uh, smaller players as options to partner in CX Tech again? You you uh, mentioned you you laid out a lot of uh, players in the market in your researches. You work with them very closely. You do interview with them. You know you understand their maturity level. You talk to their clients. Simply again, you know the pulse of the industry. So how do you how do you compare them? Or again, how is your experience or take on to ask the question appropriately? 
It, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think, and, and I think we do see somewhat different types of uh, patterns and different types of uh, programs being introduced at the large enterprise uh, level versus uh, medium businesses in particular. Uh, small businesses, you know, more locally based businesses are increasingly adopting some of the tools for customer insights and feedback, really trying to track customer satisfaction, in some cases implementing loyalty programs, but they really don't have quite the same needs or quite the same capabilities of larger organizations when it comes to the broader view of the technology stack and the, and the more complex customer journeys that those are based on. And so, you know, if you kind of look at the other end of the scale with the largest organizations, one of the key tricks is just the IT architecture, the, the, the data infrastructure of the business. There may be legacy systems that are being used that are decades old at this point, and they have to be integrated if you're going to gain a holistic view of customer data. Um, if it's a newer organization that, you know, has a, has a more modern technology stack to begin with, it becomes a little bit simpler, but then there are other challenges just based on uh, you know, the, the, the nature of the customer journey and the customer touch points. And then sort of you know, backing into medium-sized businesses, I think that's where a lot of the sweet spot of CX innovation is happening today. Those are some of the folks who can benefit from the, um, the case study examples that are, that are being forged largely by the large enterprises and can also benefit from the standardized capabilities and tools that are being provided uh, by the vendors and other service providers in the market. So it's uh, it's interesting. And just like you know, every industry is a little bit different from a CX perspective, really each competitor within a given industry is different because their data infrastructure is different. The nature of their customer touch points are different. And so there are a lot of common tools here, there's, but there's not a uh, not one recipe that works for everybody. I think it's learning from uh, the different pieces and really bearing the key um, uh, business objectives of your individual organization in mind. And that can vary by geography, as we talked about before, it can vary by size of business and it can vary by industry, but you know, really each individual company or organization is unique when it comes to designing the best CX program. That's a fantastic point. So um, we have a few more questions, but just being sure. mindful of the time. Uh, for a few different reasons. So um, as you know, all around the world, um, uh, as you said, one of the bigger partners of CX community is CXPA. CXPA networks are also hosting events all around the world. Mm -hmm. So I'll be also running one in London. <laughs> you know, the event already started. So I'll be running to them. All our team will be joining to the event in Istanbul, in some other parts of the world. Um, and we've been also participating some online, like Romania, et cetera. So the CXPA network in, uh, in uh, different geographies are doing, again, fantastic job to celebrate today. And thank you very much to Euclid uh, and Dash Network for um, you know, supporting our community, being here and sharing with us, especially at such an early time in, in US right now. We really appreciate it. We truly appreciate it. And then um, you know, for everyone um, that made it uh, through here, uh, it's, it's almost like six hours, more than six hours now uh, since, since we've started. So thank you very much, everyone. Uh, it was great uh, working with you. It was great seeing with you. And hopefully, uh, you know, I see a few people from different regions now. Uh, we will be able to hug each other, see each other in person in some of the events that I mentioned, or let's say next year. So happy CX Day, happy CX Day 2022, and looking forward to seeing you all soon, very, very soon.